Our local ham brought me this old Kenwood TH21AT handheld transceiver with five battery packs. The battery packs are all bad. One of them had already been opened. And uh, you can see they're quite messy inside. The batteries have corroded. He also brought a few packs of uh, Duracell AAA rechargeable batteries. You can tell what he wants done. So, we're going to have to open these battery packs up, which I've already opened one right here. The batteries are glued along the edges, and the batteries themselves are tack welded at the ends with these little metal strips that uh, hold them together. So, they're Here's the red wire, the positive end, tack weld strip, tack weld strip, back and forth and back up to the negative here. So that's how they're joined together. The battery packs themselves, if you look inside, they have uh, plus and minus markers and battery indicators and little dividers and slots at the ends where there could have been little metal strips going between each of the battery sections. So the battery pack could have been manufactured for use with replaceable batteries or manufactured with these generic cells soldered in, which is what they did. Which is too bad. There's no metal strips present. I can't just take this out and put fresh batteries in. I'm going to have to take the new batteries and solder wires to make them pairs and, and do the same daisy chain all the way across the pack. So that's what we have to do. So how do you solder onto a regular battery? Well this end will take solder but not very well. It's chrome plated. That's why it's so shiny. It keeps it from corroding. And the solder doesn't like to stick to that too well unless you get it really hot. And if you get it too hot, you can actually damage the cell. So the solution is to take a file and just score the nub a little bit until it's got a nice scratchy surface on it. And on the back, I'm going to take the edge or the end of the file and I'm going to just score and scratch the middle of the back. By scratching through that chrome, you give a, you create a bare metal, fresh metal surface that the solder can stick to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take six batteries, score them, and then I'm going to put a little solder on there so they're ready to take a wire. And to help, I've made a little jig. Drilled a couple of holes in the wood that'll hold the battery for me and actually hold two batteries side by side when I go to put a jumper wire between them. And we should be able to, without much time at all, or without much heat, there, see, look at that, solder just took right to it perfectly. So we'll do that on six of the batteries to prepare them. There we go. So scoring the surface, let's just put solder on there. Okay, I'm going to prepare six batteries, and then we'll turn our attention back to the battery pack. Now that I have my six batteries pre-tinned with solder, I'm going to remove the old batteries from the pack. There are two wires that come from the connectors on the end here. There's the positive lead that comes up to this tab, and the negative that follows along on this side of the pack cuts across the battery to connect here. So I've got to remove those, desolder those wires from the tabs, Hopefully they're just sitting on the tab and they're not going through a hole. Let's see. Yes. Yeah, it came right off. So I just took the wire and just touched the solder and it came right loose. See. The batteries were held in with this glue. It's this really nasty brown glue. It's similar to the Sony Bond that I saw in the Kenwood radio. So we'll take the old 
generic batteries out and dispose of them. Now the pack has fragments of glue in there on these tabs. Those are probably not going to interfere with the batteries. No, there's plenty of room for them. And there's a gap here where I can run the wire between the batteries. So if I solder my wire with a little bit of an excess loop, a little sort of shape like that, then it should be able to go from one battery behind this tab to the next battery. And then the wire should help keep the batteries from slopping around in there. The black wire, however, is glued down across the back, so I'm going to have to carefully remove that, ex that glue a little bit at a time to free that wire up and to clear a path for the batteries. And then I'll be able to solder wires on the batteries and put them in. Okay, I've removed enough of the glue so that I have a clear path behind each of those tabs where the wire can go. So now I need to start soldering wires to the batteries. I'm going to use short and small hookup wire. Now this is... I have a lot of this wire. Um, I took a piece of Ethernet cable and stripped off the outer shield and pulled some of the pairs of wire out and it makes excellent short little uh, wires for using on a breadboard or for other hookups. So that's a nice cheap source of wire if you have an old Ethernet cable. The stiffer kind, so it's solid wire not stranded. Um, I think they're mostly solid, but anyway, that's a good source, a good cheap source of hookup wire. Any old Ethernet patch cable that you might have laying around uh, has got a few feet of uh, useful wire in it. So what I will do is the first one is going to go over here and the positive is going to connect to it and then the back side has to jumper over to a positive so using my jig I'll put the two batteries in together I didn't make the holes quite right I just needed to hold them side by side for me there we go like so and then I'll take my wire I'll figure out about how long it has to be and cut it. Strip both ends. And we'll just bend it up a little on this side. Down a little. Down. And back up. So we have kind of a U shape in it. so it'll fit between the batteries and then fit in the tabs. And I made that just a little too long. I'll have to shorten it a bit. Now what I should be able to do is just take the soldering iron, heat the solder, and the wire should just sit right in there like that. And then I'll do the same on the positive. Well, I do need to cut these holes a little bit wider, don't I? That's okay. I can do it this way. Yeah, see, the wire is still too long. Those are going to have to be right next to each other. That's okay. I can just bend it up a little bit more bend it down a little bit more, flatten that out a little bit more, and put them right together. In fact, since I've already got the solder on there, I should be able to do that, and then just put them together. I still made my wire too long. I'll have to redo that. Let's test fit it. Yes, I made it too long. After I do two or three of these, I'll figure out the right length and uh, it'll go faster. 
Now that I've got the soldering done on all the batteries, <clears throat> I need to massage the wires into place so the batteries will sit down in the pack. After I've got the wires there, that popped right in. After I've got the batteries all settled in, then I just need to connect the positive and negative wires from the terminals to the batteries, and we'll be done. The batteries on the end, since I have nothing connected to them or loose, I can just lift one up and hold it there while I take the soldering iron and connect the wire. I'll route the wire after I've got it soldered. Oops. Now, let's pre-bend the wire to make this a little bit easier. There. Need a little solder on the soldering iron. There's our positive connection, and we'll just tuck that wire back down out of the way and turn our attention to the negative end. Same deal. I'm going to pre-bend this over like that, and then I just need to put some solder on my iron. Like so. Okay, so my camera's battery died just as I was testing the voltage, but let's see what we got. 7.75 volts. That looks good. Does it work in the radio? Yeah, put it the right way. Yep. And since this, since these cells are nickel cadmium, the same chemistry as the batteries that were originally in here, it should charge just fine using the existing um, charger. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I made a couple of labels here. You can't, probably can't see that on camera, but that says new cells, 8, 2018. And we'll just... Uh, We'll just put a little tape over that. There we go. And I do that so that uh, uh, he can keep track, you know, as the time goes by when the cells were replaced in this battery. Okay, the last thing to do is this cover. It stays on there pretty good. It just sort of snaps in, but uh, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to put just a little bit of adhesive, just a dab, just a dot of adhesive on this tab here so that it'll stay shut. I'm not going to glue it too rigidly. Um, you don't want to seal it up permanently. You just want you just want it to uh, hold it, you know, so I'll just put the tiniest bit. So let me just get some adhesive here. There we go. And we'll just put a little dab here on this tab. And that should do it. That should do it. So there we go. We have a good battery pack. Now I just have to do that one more time with one of these others. And uh, he'll have two good battery packs. And uh, he'll be able to use his radio. So that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.